فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم We said that the ayah ulaik alim salawat min rabbihim wa rahma has to show some form of difference between the two of them so we can't deal with them as they both they are that they are both that they are both the same no so there should be a difference um, also the fact that a noble imam Abu Ali al-Raya'i he spoke and he gave an explanation his call should be more beloved to us than the call of the mutakhirin he's an imam in aimati salaf he's a student of ibn Abbas and Abdullah ibn Mas'ud so his, his, his understanding has that status with it which means tana'uhu that Allah praises him uh, في الملاء الأعلى Allah praises him high above in the sama uh, he praises the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that is that is it the question that arises here is can salah be done for anybody other than the Prophet can I say Nasiruddin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yeah so the scholars they took two opinions some who said no you can't and some who said you can the ones who said that you can they used the hadith of the Prophet they said the Prophet did it for somebody the Prophet said Allahumma salli ala ali abi awfa oh Allah do salli upon the family of abi awfa so they said look the Prophet said Allahumma salli on ala abi ala ali abi awfa the other group who said that it's not allowed they said that this is what for the Prophet Sallallahu wa salamuhu alayhi Specifically, this is khasiyatu. It's one of the things that no one else should share, should share with him. But the way to reconcile between the two opinions is that, huh? is that you are allowed to say it, but it can't be a symbol for anybody. لا تكون شعارا It shouldn't be a symbol. It shouldn't be something that whenever you say, for example, Abu Bakr sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Imam al-Shafi'i sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It shouldn't be something that you always do. But it, what it can do is, if you every now and then you do say it, لا بأس به. There's no problem with that. But to make it something that is what? A continuous pattern is not right. One should not do that. So what we say is, um, أنه يجوز الصلاة والسلام You can send the salah and the salam على غير الأنبياء in anybody other than the prophets but لا تجعل uh, it should not be made a shi'ar maybe one time or two if you say it no problem ثم صلاته الصلاة be upon the prophet مع التسليم والتسليم so what did he connect between two right now he connected between as salah and as salam And this is good. You know why? Because it's khurujan anil khilafi. He's actually left the, the, the debate and the discussions that's happening amongst the scholars. The scholars are discussing within themselves that it's some are of the opinion that it's disliked or some have even taken the extent that it's haram to just send on the Prophet as salah. It has to be done with salam. You see? That's their argument. Okay. And others are what? Others are saying, no, you can. حال, the Shaykh, he has left the realm of the discussion. Because he said, Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayyu alladheena amunu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. So salah and the salam have been combined in this ayah. Ayah 56, Surah Al-Ahzab. Both of them you find in the ayah. So because Allah combined between the two, the Shaykh doing this is a noble act. The ones who say that it's, you have to do it, <coughs> and if you leave it, it is not allowed, they're using what is known as dalalatu, dalalatu, dalalatu al-iqtiran is what they're using. Dalalatu al-iqtiran. Dalalatu al-iqtiran meaning what? The fact that Allah connected the two between one another is what? 
But dalalatul ikhtiral is not an hujja always. It can be daif. It can be weak at times. Sah? Dalalatul ikhtiral can be sometimes weak. Are you with me, brothers? And the condition, what makes dalalatul ikhtiral strong, and when it's weak and it's not considered, ah, uh, I've mentioned it in a video I made about ijma' when I spoke about the ijma' because the dalalatul al-ikhtiran is used in the ayah وَمَنْ يُشَاكِقَ الرَّسُولَ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ الْهُدَى وَيَتَّبِعْ غَيْرَ سَبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ نُوَلِّي إِمَا تَوَلَّى وَنُسْلِهِ جَعَلَّمْ وَسَاءَتْ مَسِيرًا وَسَاءَتْ مَصِيرًا This ayah has in it dalalatul al-ikhtiran meaning Allah connected to himself and the Prophet, the believers. So that shows that this ruling نُوَلِّهِ مَا تَوَلَّى وَنُصْلِهِ جَهَنَّمُ وَسَاءَتْ مَصِيرًا is for anyone who takes a path other than Allah and his messenger and the believers. So this dalalat al-ikhtiran here is strong. You can't say it's weak, um, the believers are not in here. Like dalalat al-ikhtiran is a hujja here. Why is it here? And not in Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-nabi Ya ayu al-ladheena amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima I mentioned the condition elsewhere. I can... And also when the dalalat al-ikhtaran is used is the hadith of huh? Al-Mubihuna Lil-Aghani Those who make music permissible they try to take this usuli which is the hadith of the Prophet um, uh, that the Prophet alayhi salatu wassalam he said La yakunanna aqwamu min ummati yastahilluna al-hira wal-harira wal-ma'azifa wa la yanzilanna aqwamun ila jambi alamin yaruhu alayhim bisarihatil ila akhir hadith the Prophet ﷺ connected here what? Al-Harira, which is haram, the ijma'ah, there's no khilaf, for the men of course. You see? Al-Hira, you see? Wal-Harira, zina, the silk for the men. Wal-Ma'azif and music, are you with me? So it's mentioned in the context of things that are mujma'un alayhi ala tahrimi. So they try to get out of that by saying, Dalalatul ikhtirani is da'if. We shouldn't even take it. Like, هذا بغير صحيح. That's not correct. دلالة الاقتران is a hujja with conditions. بإجماع الأصوليين. The أصوليين agree when these conditions are met, then it's a hujja. Other than that, when those conditions are missing, they differ within themselves if it's a proof or not. صحيح. And inshallah ta'ala, في موضعه in its place, we should discuss this issue, inshallah ta'ala, in its place. In its place. So the Shaykh ala kulli hal, whatever the case may be, he actually left the discussion and the debate. Why should he even do that? He wouldn't need to. He just followed what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did. Ma'at taslim, what does taslim mean? It comes in the form of taf'il. Taf'il, bima'ana salam. It means salam, peace. Which in the Arabic language, originally, lughatan, it means a tahiyya, greeting. But here, what's meant by it is a salam to be safe, to be protected uh, من الآفات uh, والنقائص that Allah protects the Prophet ﷺ from any deficiency, any harm all of this, in this world and in the hereafter على النبي upon the Prophet جار ومجرور متعلق بقوله the جار the مجرور here is connected to صلاته may the salah be upon the Prophet that's what it is ثم الصلاة على النبي may the salah be upon the Prophet May the salah be upon the Prophet. So the question here is, Sa'ad is, Thumas ala nabiyy upon the Prophet. Ada jar wa majroor. That is what? A jar. And it's also what? A majroor. The question is, Salatuhu was the irab for it. Ala nabiyy we know it's jar wa majroor. Salatu is the irab for it. Salah here is marfu'ah. Salatu is marfu'ah. The Arab here is a Mubtada. Where is the Khabar for the Mubtada? Ala Nabi. So we say, Jar wa Majroor al Mutaalikun bi Mahdoof al Khabar al Mubtada'i ala Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The word Al Nabi, Al Nabi, with the Hamza, is from the word Al Imba. Imba. One of two words that it comes from. It either comes from imba, which is to inform. 
and that's the job of the Prophet, which is he informs the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's legislations. And it also, bit it is from the word an nabwa, which is to be here, rif'a, given high status and a high position. And that is the job of a Prophet to convey the message, which is imba'. And he's also ranked his, Allah ranked, Allah positioned him high. So both are in the meaning of it. Naam. This meaning which we said, salatuhu, may Allah's peace and salutation be upon the Prophet is what? Is jumla khabariya lafdan, insha'iya ma'nan. In its wording is khabariya. But the meaning is dua. We're making dua for the Prophet. And we've taken this when we were talking about what? Alhamdulillah. Remember? We said Alhamdulillah is what? Khabariya lafzan ma'an insha'iya ma'anan. We explained it over there. So the Shaykh Rahimahullah, he goes on to say in Ar-Ra'ufir Rahimi. It was meant to be Ar-Ra'uf Ar-Rahimi. Ar-Ra'uf. That's the Asal. But here, because of the wazm, because of the rhythm of the poetry, تضم الهمزة مع الاختلاس قصري. The way we read it is what? Ar-Ra'uf Ar-Rahimi. That's what we say. Ar-Ra'uf Ar-Rahimi. And we get rid of the wow. تحضف الواو. Get rid of the wow. And instead of the wow, what do we bring? The Hamza with a dhamma on top of it and we shorten it in the way we pronounce it. That is how to read it. Ar Rahim is fa'il. And sorry, the word Ra'uf we we took well in how to read it is Ar Ufir Rahimi. But what does it mean? It comes from the word Ra'fa. Ar Ra'fa is a more stronger meaning than Rahmah. So, so, so it means very strong mercy. In other words, it's called Shiddatul Rahmah. Ar-Ra'fa is when the person is excessively merciful. Sah? Ar-Rahim is Fa'il. Ar-Rahim is Fa'il. And <coughs> so if it's Fa'il, that, that which comes in that form of fa'il, it, it means what? It means mercy. So, and it means excessive mercy. So how do we distinguish between ar-ra'ufir rahimi, ra'uf, and ar-rahim? How do we distinguish between the two? The word ar-rahim is more general. <coughs> it's more general in meaning than ar-ra'ufi. It's more meaning. Muhammadin, this is badal. Two, we can, we can do it two if we want. We can either say it is badal. And if it's badal, then it's going to be badal kullu min kulli. Because there's different types of badal. Or we can say it is atfu bayan. One of those two. In other words, Muhammad has taken the place of a Nabi. We just mentioned Nabi, right? It took the place, Muhammad and Nabi are badal kullu min kulli. Or you can say it's atfu bayanin. Or you can say it's atfu bayanin. Muhammad is a name of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and it is from the ism maf'ul which is the mudaaf. it's from the original word hummida that's what it comes from the word Muhammad comes from the ism maf'ul al mudaaf. remember when we studied uh, sarf we studied the, the word that has the shadda in the middle on the ayn mudaaf. Muhammad hummida Muhammad is hummida the one who's been praised. That's what it comes from. Why is he being praised for? Because of the khisalul hamida, the praiseworthy characteristics and attributes that are in him. And our Prophet was given that name. But then the Prophet, his parents are the ones who gave this to him and his granddad. Sah? Where did it go? Who, how? We say, ilhamu min Allah Azza wa Jalla li ahlihi bidalik. Allah guided his family to name him this because he's going to become one who's going to be praised. He's going to be praised. When he's mentioned, good will be mentioned with him. 
as for those who insult him and give, belittle him alayhi salam fi qulubihim maradun fazadahumullahu marada they are sick hearted and may Allah increase them in sickness in their hearts as for our prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam he is greater and more noble than anybody we can describe and he's more beloved to us than than then we love ourselves. Wa'alihi and on his family. The opinion that we took regarding the Al is the view of Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah, which is that his Al Ahu Ab Benil Muttalib and Hashim. Benil Muttalib and Bani Hashim. Those two are the, the Al that are meant. Because they are the ones that the zakat is made haram from. They can't take the zakat, right? Sorry, uh, sadaqa. they can't take sadaqa. Sah? And when it comes to the hummus, when the spoils of war are divided into five hummus, they take it. In the ayat, as referring to one fifth of the spoils of war, is for Bani Hashim and Bani Al Muttalib. That's the opinion that we took. And to strengthen that opinion, uh, uh, the zakat, sadaqa, and that ayah strengthens the opinion of Imam Shafi'i, rahimahullah ta'ala. Wa alihi al-athari. The word athar is plural. From the original word of tahir, pure. Purif purified. The purified family of the Prophet. And this is taken from the ayah of the Quran. Inna yuridu Allahu. Allah wants. Liyudhiba ankum urrijsa ahl al-bayti wa yutahhirakum tathira. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, what does he want? He wants to remove from the his his close family uh, filth and to purify them. That's what Allah wants. That is what Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. So then here we can see that maybe we can add the wives of the Prophet into this because the ayah is specifically talking about the wives of the Prophet and of course his family as well. The ayah is talking about the Prophet Sallallahu wives and also the other family of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because, Ya Nisa an fala takhta'na bil qawli fayatma'a alladhi fi qalbi wa qul fayatma'a alladhi fi qalbi marad wa qulna qawlan ma'rufa wa qarna fi buyutukunna wa la tabarrajna tabarruj al-jahiliyyati al-ula wa aqimna salatu atina zakatu wa atina Allah wa rasoolah innama yuridu Allah li yudhiba ankum al rijsa ahlal bayti wa tahirakum tatira. It comes right after that. Ya Nisa an was always been said. Sah? So, the Al here is the Prophet Asabah's family. Alayhi with his wives in it. Wa sahbihi and the Prophet Asabah's companions. Sahab, his companions, is jam'u sahib. Is the plural of what? It is the plural of companions. Comp uh, sahib. Sahib, the plural of it is. Uh, and, uh, sahib is the singular. Sahab is plural. What is a companion? Man laqiya al Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a mu'minan bih. The one who meets the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a state of iman. That's a condition. And also what's the condition is, he has to meet the Prophet. So he doesn't have to see the Prophet. Because there were companions that were blind. Huh? That were blind. Um, and he also has to be, has to die upon iman. If he apostates, his iman will go. And so with his, he won't be a companion. He will not be a, he won't, he will not be a companion. But what about if he apostates, but he comes back? Even if it's after the Prophet's death. He comes back like him. The Prophet is dead now. He was with the Prophet, the Prophet went, he apostated and he came back. Eh? He, and he comes back. What's the ruling regarding this? The scholars, they differ. <laughs> Amongst themselves, amongst themselves, like in the issue of the companion, a companion is like your righteous actions, just the same. Your righteous actions only goes when you die. Before that, if you repent and you come back to your senses and you come back to Islam, your righteous actions that you've done before will always be brought back to you. And that's the same for a companion. So for example, if a person apostates and he done hajj and he apostates and he comes back to Islam, does he have to do hajj again? 
No, he doesn't have to do Hajj. The Hajj and everything, that he's already done it. And that's the opinion that is the strongest. Well, that's why Ibn Hajar in his Nukhbatul Fikr, Nusat al Nadafi, Tawdih Nukhbatul Fikr, he mentions, ولو تخللت ردته على الأصحي okay. He used the word على الأصحي according to the strongest opinion in the khilaf amongst the scholars um, The question is is that we know the jinns have companions no doubt about that because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was sent to them Allah said in the ayah وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنْسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ So the Prophet was sent to them but the question is was the Prophet also sent to the angels this is a discussion and a khilaf amongst the ulama in which they discuss amongst themselves. Um, the author goes on to say, Al Afadili, the Sahabas were Afadil. Afadil is Jab'u Fadil, virtuous person, a noble person. Jab'u Afadal. Al Abrari, Brar is Jab'u Bar, the obedient person. It's the person who is what? And the plural of the word, the word al-abrar, barara. That's one plural as well that can be used. The Sahabas were very obedient to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The examples of their obedience is is, is 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 seen in their biography and their sirah. If one to one wants to know, you can see how the Sahabas were. They were abrar, barara. Obedient to the Messenger, alayhi salatu wassalam. Naqifu ala hadha wallahu a'lam. We'll stop there, and Allah knows best. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa tuwubu ilayhi.